uh, which will keep a lid on economic growth. So we talk about between one and two percent economic growth. Let's call it one and a half percent, which is also more or less in line with population growth, which means unemployment and poverty and those sort of levels will remain where they will be, remain elevated and may even go up a little bit. What does 2023 have in store for the South African economy and the South African consumer? Is it all good news, all bad news, or maybe just a little bit in between? Joining me to discuss is Chief Economist from the Efficient Group, Davi Ruet. Davi, thanks very much for being with us. Just a quick overview. How do you foresee things playing out in, in 2023 for the currently very embattled South African consumer? Yeah, uh, hello. Thank you for, for this opportunity and all the best to you for 2023. I think this could be another wild year. 2022 certainly was a very wild year. Uh, and perhaps a good place to start is to, to look back a little bit at 2022, because I think 2022 was a year where many things changed direction. I think it's a year where there were major international political developments. I think uh, it's a year with the further uh, uh, where the world economy it started it started off with Trump, but but the the globalization was put into reverse. I think that was an important year for that as well. It actually started with Trump a little before that. It was a year with very very high levels of inflation globally, uh, and of course high commodity prices and interest rates. Central banks are really throwing everything at inflation, trying to tame inflation. Uh, and it was a year where the world was preparing for significant slowdown in economic activities. I think those are some of the major trends that were established, of course, many more, but those are some important trends that we could, that happened in 2022 that will continue in 2023. So what is likely to happen in 2023? A couple of things. I think inflation, from an international point of view, inflation is likely to be with us for some time still, but I think the worst is probably behind us. Uh, and there are a couple of reasons we can talk about that a little bit as well. And that also means that central banks internationally are likely to keep on increasing interest rates, but less than what they did in 2022. So we're seeing the end of this interest rate cycle, I would say. And in fact, good possibility of a cut in rates next year. And because of all these factors, the world economy is slowing down quite significantly. There are many patches in the world economy that will be going into a recession like the Europeans, like perhaps even the Americans and some other economies as well. We can talk about that as well. So the world economy is slowing down quite a lot because uh, in reaction to things like, for example, the, the increase in interest rates. So that's the global environment in which we find ourselves at the moment. As far as the South African economy, we've, we followed pretty much the trends that were established internationally. So we also saw inflation. We saw the Reserve Bank acting uh, quite uh, quite quickly, quite early in the cycle, and I'm quite happy about that. And they started uh, hiking interest rates, tightening monetary policy, and they will continue to do that. So I think that we could see and should see and must see further increases in interest rates. But again, I think we're probably are close to the end of that specific cycle. Inflation is likely to slow down a little bit as well by the middle of the year. And by the, the second half of the year, we can perhaps be talking about the possibility of interest rate cuts. Um, of course, this will have a negative impact on the average consumer, rising interest rates, but there's something far more dangerous to the average consumer, and that is called the South African government. Because the South African government, we are we're supposed to have an election next year, and the South African government, we don't expect, expect much governing happening here, but expect a lot of politics happening here. Because uh, the, the, I, I think the ANC realizes that they, that they are in trouble. Uh, they simply do not have enough time to... Put, put measures in place in trying to get political support. There just isn't time. Uh, and I think they will try to make all sort of comments and promises and who knows what in order to try to, to prevent them from losing too much in the general election. They just don't have enough time. Uh, and of course, it's always the lack of electricity, uh, which will keep a lid on economic growth. So we talk about between one and two percent economic growth. Let's call it one and a half percent, which is also more or less in line with population growth which means unemployment and poverty and those sort of levels will remain where they will be, remain elevated and may even go up a little bit. So that in a sort of a nutshell, perhaps a bit of a good news. Uh, and that is that uh, I, I think financial, well, I know financial markets always dis try to discount the future. So as soon as the financial markets see that inflation is a problem, uh, we quite often see the financial markets react quite negative to rising inflation, as an example, in anticipation of tighter monetary policy going forward. And now the financial markets will start seeing 
listen, inflation is probably going to slow down a little bit, and that means slightly less restrictive monetary policy over the next couple of months. And I think the financial markets may start reacting more positively. So this could be a year that's going to be better for the financial markets than what we saw in 2022, because they will start discounting looser monetary policy going forward. But in terms of economic growth, I'm afraid South Africa is not going to do well, and we're probably not going to do well for a long, long, for many, many years. Darvi, in terms of those uh, concrete real world effects on the, especially low to middle income South Africans in terms of uh, fuel prices, taxes, maybe on certain foodstuffs, where do you foresee those going? Do you think maybe because next year yeah. is a general election, there will be maybe cuts? Or do you think because the fiscus is under so much pressure, the government simply has to increase where possible? Yeah, no, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, a little bit of good news. Uh, the, the, the oil price has been coming down quite a lot recently. Uh, many analysts, including, I mean, major banks in the world predicted that the oil price will remain elevated and may even go up. And that certainly can happen, depending what happens politically in, in, uh, in, in, in Central Europe, as an example, and some other places as well. But my view is that the oil price will continue to drift a little bit lower. And part of the reason why I say so is because of a relatively mild winter that they have in Europe. That's one reason. But more importantly, I think there will be, especially Venezuela is likely to start pumping oil again. And I think the Americans will relax some of the sanctions on Venezuela and additional supply from Venezuela will uh, then put, put downward pressure on the oil price. Also, and politically, this is quite important where we've seen quite a shift to the right in terms of politics globally the last couple of years, that seems to be shifting to the left. And what happens in South America, Lula won the election in Brazil, as an example. Lula is much more friendly uh, to Maduro than what Bolsonaro was. And Lula certainly, or Latin America certainly, is likely to be more friendly towards Maduro than previously, and they will probably put some pressure on the United States also to re relax some sanctions. That means more oil, and more oil means lower oil price, of course. But of course, there yeah, could be other factors as well. But as far as oil is concerned, I think that's good news. Uh, and I think the oil price will come down, which means that the petrol price locally will be coming down as well. As far as the RAND exchange rate is concerned, I think the RAND so far is behaving itself quite nicely. And I think the RAND it's probably going to remain more or less these kind of levels and actually appreciate a little bit against uh, some of the majors, especially if let's say Chakanyaka continue with this tight monetary policy that they has been following recently. So that's a good thing. Um, uh, as far as some taxes are concerned, I think the Minister of Finance is going to make use of this, this opportunity. And I think he's going to hike the fuel levy quite a lot. So I won't be surprised if we see the minute. And that's a, well, it's not a good thing. All taxes are always bad. Uh, but but this is an opportunity for the Minister of Finance to, to generate some additional income. And with the petrol price coming down, instead of giving it through to the consumer, you can simply fill that gap with an additional uh, increase in the fuel levy. Uh, and the fuel levy is, is, a, is a less bad tax than some other taxes, like, for example, personal income taxes. But talking about the budget or the fiscal accounts, so the fiscal accounts will remain in trouble. Uh, they need some more money. I think the fuel levy is pretty much a given. Uh, there could be some talk about things like, for example, a wealth tax. I don't think that will re uh, that will happen soon. Uh, and more importantly, I think, will are uh, two other questions. What will happen to the basic income grant? That's something that I will be keeping an eye open for. And the other one, of course, is what's going to happen to the debt of ESCO. Those are two big outstanding issues. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so, uh, I, I guess 2023 could be more of the same of 2022, although I guess some of these bad news is probably more behind us than ahead of us. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember before you leave to like the video. And also, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, additionally, please share this video along your contacts and your networks. We appreciate any coverage that you can help us get in terms of getting the ideas and arguments out there. Until next time, this has been Chris Hutton for the Center for Risk Analysis. Take care.